Good evening, please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. The Board of Selectmen and all town employees, I'm sure, would like to join the uh, Hampton Fire and Rescue in expressing that prof profound sadness with the passing of our own hero, firefighter parametric Carl Jamison. We uh, wish to give our condolences to his wife, Christine, son, Liam, and his mother, Sheila. And we all have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. First thing on the agenda is the public comment period. Does anybody that would like to speak? <clears throat> I've been mulling over this since the last meeting you folks Pete, met. just give us an, your name oh. and your address so that we know who you are. Pete Tilton, Landing Road, Hampton. Thank you. All right. Um, since the situation with the force main break in the marsh has been ongoing, uh, I've heard uh, Selectman Griffin speculate, and I was hoping he'd be here tonight to educate him, that the force main under the marsh may have been broken for years when this, in fact, is just not possible. DES is out there on an almost weekly basis during the shellfish season testing the water to make sure it's safe for harvesting. Anytime it gets above, I believe, 44 micrograms of coliform, they close the flats. Yep. Um, I keep tabs on this because I've lived next to the river for a long time, been a shellfisher and sold clam forks and all that stuff. Um, when this happened in early December, I speak to Chris Nash of the DES quite a lot. He, he asked me if I'd seen anything going on because he was <coughs> encountering higher bacteria counts than he'd ever seen by far in all the years he'd been testing out there and he just couldn't figure it out. And this was in early December and the clam flats <coughs> clam flats were closed immediately at that point and in fact they haven't reopened till just this past weekend, six months. Um, DPW at that point wasn't aware of it. <coughs> I remember bringing this up at a conservation commission meeting to Ray Ann to have her put the word out to have people try to see what's going on, if they can see what, where this is coming from. And it was, in fact, about two months before DES and DPW found the break in the marsh out there, just from an on-site inspection. Um, <coughs> but even after the pipe was discovered and taken offline, the, as I said, the, the clam flats were closed for another four months due to the, the huge amount of uh, virus that the clams had accumulated. The, the water itself was clean, but the clams were still highly toxic with virus that causes norovirus, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I also heard at last week's meeting that the state isn't going to fine us or shut the beach down, which in fact may be true. Um, the one thing that is certain, and I've been around this for a while and I talked to people at EPA and DES, they, they won't let the town pump untreated sewage into the marsh knowingly. It will be shut down, the pipe. And what the beach chooses to do at that point is whether they flush on number one only or put up a couple thousand porta potties, I don't know. Um, right now, Hampton Beach is a five-star beach for cleanliness. They've been publicizing this for the last four years, and it's been very good PR for the town and the businesses down there, as well as, as dread. But if you can imagine what had happened last winter, uh, occurred during July, and Channel 9 showed up broadcasting after visiting beachgoers encountered raw sewage in the waves. And all I can think is, is you, you think a shark sighting is bad, wait until you see a poop panic. I mean, you're not going to get over that for a long time. This beach is our golden goose, and it would be years before people stop talking about it if the pipe breaks in <laughs> summer. The economic fallout would be devastating. So I just hope everybody gets on board, and let's not be short-sighted for once, and make sure there is a new force main up 101 before the summer of 2017. 
and that's all I've got on that. But hopefully you, this Pete. will be going forward. We look for I look forward to when you come in because you always you have a you know much more about that march than I do. So is there anybody else that wants to speak? Yeah. Brian Lapp from 27 9th Street. Um, would it be possible to get a copy? I know it was brought up at the last meeting about um, how our bonding issues, um, how we're going to bond things. Um, there seems to be an issue, and I'm not sure what it is, as to why we're not getting anyone to the IRPs and everything else. Um, and I'm just curious to know what what the holdup is. We're only getting one, two bids, maybe. And to me, this seems like there's a um, there's an issue, and I'd like to know what it is, if that's at all possible. No, that was the only thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would get up, like to speak? Seeing none, back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Regina? I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Thank okay. you. Yeah, Senator Stiles asked me to announce that uh, there's going to be a jobs fair at the Seabrook Community Center this Thursday, 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Seabrook Community Center. Very good. Mr. Bean? Nothing, sir. Thank you. All I got to say is the... Uh, the rec department did their annual fishing derby on Saturday at Bachelor's <coughs> Pond. Um, if you don't, if you've never been to one of those, you should go. It's, it's pretty comical to see all these youngsters out there having the time of their life, <laughs> catching fish, and to see who catches the biggest and who catches the smallest. Um, our rec department did an excellent job putting that on, and uh, I want to congratulate them for that. Consent agenda. We have a solicitation permit for New Hampshire Public, Public Television from May 17th to May 18th. And number two, we have RSA 3195 small b 3A to accept and expend New Hampshire Highway Safety Grant money, Hampton Steps Patrols, $17,160, and Hampton DWI Patrols, $7,800. We have a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, appointments. Christy Poland. Is she hiding back there behind the chair? Yep. I was, I was hiding, yes. Hiding in the back. So I'm here with the um, April financials. You guys should have all received them last week. They're on the website, and they have also been distributed out to the budget committee. Uh, that this is the fourth month of 2016, and the target is 33.33 percent. The month's total income was $623,862. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $273,000. $287, which is over the target by $25,287. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $28,709, building permits at $27,895, highway subsidy at $67,136, uh, departmental um, at $46,000. 143 rice sewer at 58,806 parking lots at 43,252 and I just pointed out there that um, the majority of that money came from our summer leases because those are all usually sent out at the beginning of April and those go into effect on May 15th so I think the lots were only open like once or twice and then real estate trust at 64,393 the expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of April, the operating departments without debt service but with open purchase orders was at 31.24% of the budget, 
which is under the target by 2.09% or 504,000. Overall, the departments as a whole are running under the target at 33.33%. Um, the first two that I noted there are voter registration and election administration. Those are both over, but they're close to what they were in um, March. So nothing's really changed there. I think that um, with all of the elections and everything they have at the beginning of the year, it makes sense for those to be over target. Finance, the same thing. Um, it's the same accounts that were over in March. OT wages, repairs and maintenance, and supplies and expenses. The OT wages is related to end of year and audit prep. Repairs and maintenance is for our service contract for our financial software. And then supplies and expenses is a, a large chunk of that line item goes to the printing of the town reports. Um, in MIS, the supplies and expenses is at 79.69%, and that's mostly related to license renewals, which are usually a once a year type of uh, occurrence. <coughs> Planning Board Contracted Services and Dues is at 72.9%. Cemeteries Heating Fuel is at 100.3%, and Repairs and Maintenance is at 54.85%, and Replacement Equipment is at 65.51%. The Police Department is at 26.82% overall when the open peels are included. Um, accounts to note here is under training and recruitment is at 70.56% and support service uh, vacation wages is at 50.07%. Fire department is at 31.36% overall with the open purchase orders. Accounts that I noted here were under administration, the career incentives and tuition reimbursement. And under fire suppression, OT wages, and repairs and services uh, OT wages. Emergency management is at 98.46%. Um, I made a little note after I sent this out to you guys, but I was talking to Richie and Jamie Ayotte, and uh, both of them said that a lot of those expenses will be reimbursed from when they do the drills okay. for the EOC over at the fire station. And um, so there should be money coming in to cover yep. some of those expenses there. Highways and Streets is at 28.36% overall with open purchase orders. Accounts to note here are under administration, the rentals and leases, and snow and ice removal, um, hired equipment winter. And Municipal Sanitations is running slightly above the target at 34.96. However, if you um, take out the annual purchase order for chemicals, they're at 31.94. So I'd say they're right on target uh, for where they should be at this time of year. The open uh, purchase order for chemicals is, chemicals is like 74000 so that eats up a large chunk, and so that's what's pushing that over. We see that happen every year, usually. Some accounts to note in this section uh, was under administration, the hired equipment summer, and grease disposal. Under the landfill operations, the groundwater monitoring. Under the transfer station, you have uh, staff development, repairs and maintenance, hired equipment summer, and supplies and expenses. And the transfer station as a whole is over target at 37.28%. And under repairs and maintenance, the sewer line maintenance is over target. In culture and recreation, an account to note here would be under administration, which is the uniform expenses. Uh, under the warrant articles, you'll see that the majority of the health agencies have been paid at this point, And also there has been an increase in activity for other warrant articles that have passed now that the election is over and we're moving into the time of year where we can get some of these things, these projects done. The 2015 encumbrances are showing that 42% have been expended to date. And then when you get into the special revenue funds, uh, the recreation fund balance is $177,069 with beach sticker donations equaling $5,000. And that, once again, is the money that we use for scholarships for kids to go to camp or participate in other activities. The cable committee fund balance is $25,992. Uh, that will go up today. We, I just think I just showed Fred the uh, franchise fees came in. I think it was about 80 something thousand. So that will be going right into there um, after the town meeting vote. They'll get the whole 100% of those. Private detail, the current fund balance is 122825 the EMS, uh, the balance in this account is 492988 
wastewater system development charge. Uh, the fees collected in 2016 total $10,773, and there's a balance in this account of $74,870. And that is what I have. Questions from the board? Regina. I don't have any questions. Thank you, Christy, very much. Yeah, thank you, Christy. You've explained most of those overs last month, right? So yeah, none of them are really new, but... It, yeah, none of them are new. They're just <laughs> all from the same... Yeah, I kind of usually pick a number each month when I'm doing this, so the target was like 33. So I literally just go through anything that's over 50, I mark. Yeah, yeah. Just, and so every month I kind of just pick what the target's going to be, what I would say is kind of over. Right, the, and the revenue know. continues to increase. Yes, and I um, adjusted the, at the last quarter, I put in the new adjustments, so now I'm comparing everything to the adjusted amounts, and we're still um, running ahead. Okay, good. So. Thank you very much. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Director. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. The only one I, I just have a, a question on is Fund 27, the EMS. Yes. How is that working now that we've been able to keep better track of of what we had to write off and, and, and stuff? I like think that? it's working wonderfully. I was just telling Fred just the other day we uh, wrote off March, I believe, is what we signed off on. So um, now we literally only have three years of outstanding receivables on the books. So it, it's a better picture of what we actually have. Absolutely. So. And a better picture of what could possibly be collected <coughs> at all. Um, at one, I think when I started, we were going back to 2004, I believe. Yeah. And everyone knows that if you haven't collected 2004, you're not going to collect it in 2016. So I think it's a much better representation of, and I'm not having to make that journal entry adjusting the revenue in that fund every month either because the auditors with that large outstanding balance that we had for receivables, we were made to come up with a formula that the auditors felt was acceptable to reduce the revenue because otherwise that account, that fund was looking like it was inflated because you knew you were never going to collect that. And so we don't have to do that journal entry every month either now. So. Very good. Rick, you didn't have any no, questions? No, thank you. I didn't. Right. Sorry, I missed That's it. That's okay. I'm sure you read it, right? Yeah, I did read okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Mark Geralds, town attorney. Good evening. In light of some questions raised by Norman Silberdeck, the board had asked me to uh, take a look at the list of encumbrances that were the board was asked to approve at uh, its meeting on uh, December 21, 2015, and to examine how those played out since then uh, to determine if these uh, items were uh, properly encumbered. Uh, the suggestion was made by Mr. Silberdick that uh, both state and uh, local law has been violated, and I disagree. In terms of the state law, it's my understanding that uh, Mr. Silberdick first complains that there, there um, needed to be competitive bidding with regard to the uh, encumbrances that were authorized on December 21. And first of all, it's important for the board and the public to know that there is no state law that requires competitive bidding. This arises solely if the board or in a town charter uh, authorizes that. And this board, of course, has a purchasing policy which this board created and which this board can waive. And I believe it was implicit in the vote that was taken on December 21, 2015, to approve encumbrances uh, that this policy was waived and was not going to be required to be followed to implement uh, these encumbrances. Secondly, regarding uh, encumbrances at the end of the year, uh, there is an RSA on the subject, state statute, RSA 32 colon 7, which uh, in order to encumber monies requires the 
entering into of a legally enforceable obligation with a person. And I believe in looking at these, I have examined what the financing department has given me by way of purchase orders that were issued very shortly after uh, these, uh, the, the list of items was approved by the board. Uh, I would say there was one item that there were not purchase orders that were generated, and that was for the fire ice rescue system for $8,000. So that was on the list, but there was no purchase order for that. The rest of them, there were purchase orders, and these purchase orders were very specific to uh, certain vendors, and they were very specific in terms of amount, and they also involved a requisition which was signed by the manager in each case. So, uh, so long as there was uh, an acceptance communicated after those purchase orders were internally issued, that is, that was communicated in some fashion to the vendor, yes, we're going through with it, uh, that there was a legally enforceable obligation created. And so uh, I would like to note that uh, with regard to one of those items, the replacement of the fire telephone system, uh, that the acceptance was not in fact communicated. As a matter of fact, something different happened and there was in fact a bidding process that was done just recently and the amount uh, of the initial, and the, the party in whose uh, favor the initial, the internal purchase order was issued was actually one of the bidders. But the lower bid, uh, which was the one selected, uh, was $10,000 below that. But again, there was not a legally enforceable obligation with regard to that one because the, the acceptance was not communicated. And therefore, uh, that particular item, as I understand it, has not been charged to the year 2015 at all. It's been charged to the fire department's 2016 budget. And therefore, the encumbrance has been voided and the uh, purchase order um, internally generated is expunged. Regarding the remainder of the items, most of which I would note are single source type items, uh, specialty providers, uh, these are being carried out. And uh, in fact, there were, in my view, legally enforceable obligations. And uh, therefore, uh, legal both under state and on your local um, purchasing policy, which was waived for all of them. <coughs> any questions? Or do you have anything, Mr. Town Manager? No, no, sir. Any questions? Regina? I don't have any further questions, no. I just, so we are absolutely sure that there were commitments made that there were purchase orders and there were commitments. There, there were commitments and they're in writing and if DRA wants to come and audit it as Mr. Uh, Silverdick desires, they're welcome to come and look. Okay. And the only one that there was not, was not charged to 2015 but is being taken out of the budget 2016? That was, uh, there was a purchase order in fact issued for that but as I say, the, the acceptance of that was not communicated to the vendor and instead there was a bidding procedure where that, that vendor was a, a participant and uh, it was instead selected by uh, competitive bidding and um, that is being charged to 2016, not 2015. Okay, okay. So the only question would be, I mean, and it would just be a question of whether we should have taken them off the Warren articles and done it in the budget, but that's, that's a different question totally. Well, it is a different question, but it was addressed specifically to the board at the meeting on December 21. As a matter of fact, Selectman Woolsey stated, I think it is a cleaner way to do it than tap the undesignated fund. These things I would rather not leave to chance on the warrant. I agree with what you are saying here to meet the needs of the departments. Okay, okay. So if, if, if the individual, as it was stated in the paper, files a complaint, I don't know what the AG or who he's going to file it with, we, we feel that we're on solid legal ground. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Bean. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Esquire. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Thank you for coming and explaining it. I mean, we all were uh, given your advice before, and let's just hope everyone's happy now. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so the next thing you are here for is residential waste disposal agreement. Yes, so this is a contract that actually is a uh, follow-up to one that we've had in place for uh, 10 years, which um, I actually signed myself as, as a manager, interim manager back in 2006. And this is uh, for the disposal of sludge at the uh, turnkey facility. Uh, sludge which is hauled to that facility by our own personnel. Um, it's a contract that expires uh, July 31, 2016. And uh, one of the questions is the uh, why the, the board should uh, not put this out for competitive bidding. Fred, uh, could you explain that one? Yes, I can. Uh, <clears throat> first, this material must go to a landfill that will accept it. Right now, Turnkey will accept it. Uh, the other landfills that could be considered would be Bethlehem, New Hampshire, which is way up the other side of Franconia Notch. Uh, or we could go to uh, we could go to a landfill in, in Central Maine, uh, but we'd have to go through certifications, and each load would have to be tested, and it would be an extremely expensive operation, and we would have to haul it there every time we have a load to go. So the closest landfill, the one that is the easiest for us to get to. Uh, and we have dealt with consistently uh, is turnkey, which is just over here in Rochester. So as opposed to trying to drive all the way to Bethlehem to northern New Hampshire or central Maine, which would be the only two places in New England that we would be able to go to to dispose of this material, this is the closest vendor. Any other questions? That you say we've done this for 10 years with this same company? Actually, more than that. More than that. And have we have we gone up to competitive bid each year or no? No, we haven't. We haven't. Just simply because, because the, the distance still... is too too far. Okay. Yeah. And we do drive this material ourselves with our own equipment. So it would just increase the cost of exponentially to hire an outside vendor to do it. So I will need a motion to I'll make that motion. waiver the purchasing policy and authorize the town manager to sign the contract. I'll make that motion. I'll second. A motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Now we have approval of the minutes for May 9th, 2016, non public session minutes. Do I have a motion? I made that motion. Motion by. I'll second it. Jim, seconded by. Gina, all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I'd like everybody to remember, please, that the uh, to visit the town clerk to license your dog. Uh, this is listed wrong here, but the penalty phase for not failing to license begins the 1st of June. Uh, and I will also tell you that I believe it's the 20th of June is the date on which, or uh, close that, the closest Monday to the 20th of June, on which a warrant will be issued, which multiplies the offenses again. So uh, we would like not to have that happen to anyone in town, so please come in and license your dog. Um, in fact, we, I'd like to get the board's support later on to uh, <coughs> petition the legislature to eliminate this function. It's a useless function as it stands, so. Um, Street, street line painting is continuing uh, with many of our crosswalks, stop bars, and school crossings already completed. I'd like people to pay close attention and be careful for those crossing streets now that the, new, the good weather is with us. Um, I witnessed a pretty close call out on Lafayette Road the other day. Um, people just sometimes aren't watching. But uh, keep an eye on those crosswalks because people really do use them. Uh, recycling is, a, is most important in helping the town and our citizens to maintain as low as tax rate as, tax rate as possible. Please increase your recycling. The tax dollars you save are going to be your own uh, as opposed to someone else's. Uh, you're only going to be helping yourself. Mr. Chairman, I also have a, a communication from the Hampton Post, Hamptons Post 35 inviting all of the members of the board to participate in the Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony on Monday, May 30th. Um, I'll see you all get a copy of that. I also have a communication from uh, Tom Goditis, Lieutenant Goditis of the Police Department, 
Um, they're going to have trained fire uh, at the town firing range for the police department, and that's going to take place uh, soon. Um, included the details of attachment to locate the public works facility. The range is not open to the public. Uh, they will be advertising in the newspaper. Uh, the dates will be the 12th and 14th of May 2016. Um, so we're They've already started firing, and, and they will be con continuing those exercises because our officers must, by state law, requalify. And the last thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is I have a request from the Hampton Firefighters Memorial Sunday, uh, the Professional Firefighters of Hampton, and this is for a parade license, uh, Winnicott Road East to Mill Road North to the high school to the west, west of the cemetery. Uh, and they would like a permit from the selectmen to accomplish that parade. That should be the high street. Is it high street? Not okay. high school. Yeah. Yes. So um, I right. need a motion for I that. make a motion for that to accept that. Second. When is it? Uh, June 5th. June 5th. First Saturday, I mean first Sunday in June. Yep. I'll second so it. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? And what and time was it again? It's at 9 o'clock, I no. believe. No. In the yeah, morning. Yes. Obviously. Yes, in the morning, yes. It is. I believe it's 9 o'clock they step off. Um, oh, 900. So. It lasts for approximately one hour to do the entire route. So, and I would encourage anybody to to uh, uh, join with them at their memorial oh, yeah. service that they have. It's something they've done now for approximately 25 years. And so it's been a long time. It's, uh, it's their day. To memor memorialize um, the firefighters that have gone in this town for many, many, many years. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any questions for the town manager? I don't have any questions. Thank you. I do. Uh, sir. Comes under here, I think. I'm not sure, but we last meeting or we uh, approved the, a noise ordinance or, or changed the noise ordinance, right? We changed uh, dates on a weekend. Right. Uh, times on a weekend, right. so they were clearer. The other day, I forget what day it was last week, but I think it was before 6 in the morning, the state was working over uh, at the corner of uh, High Street and uh, King High Street and uh, Ocean Boulevard. Nothing we do affects the state. Okay. <laughs> I'd yeah. like it to. Yeah, it was, it was so, just so early, I said, wow, yeah. somebody, yeah, we, and we, I didn't hear everybody complain. We but. do notify them of changes in our noise ordinance and okay. ask them to please cooperate if they can. Uh, but... Um, we found from past examples that sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. It depends upon their understanding of what their particular emergency or, or function is at that particular point in time. Okay. Any other questions for the town manager? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Old business. I don't have anything on the here under old business. If anybody else does or does not. New business. The new purchasing policy. Excuse, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it was brought up last week that we needed to uh, readdress our purchasing policy that we had uh, last year and uh, up until now and it, uh, the ineffectiveness of it. Um, and Mr. Chairman, yep. um, I spent a week or so dorking around with this, pardon the old-fashioned expression of dorking around, but uh, I guess I'm dating myself somewhat. Um, it seems to me there are two or three simple things we can do as opposed to rewriting the purchasing policy. One is to, uh, in fact, change the number of people that you require as minimum for bidding, which would be from three to two if you decided to do that. Uh, another thing you could do was would be to raise the, the threshold from 15000 to twenty or $25,000. Um, one of the problems we have is that we're unable to, in a lot of cases, acquire three bidders. People are hesitant to bid with the town, particularly when the economy is good, um, because we require so much in the way of material items that need to be done uh, and, and material qualifications that need to be done. Um, and, that generates a lot of what I would refer to as so-called waivers, 
uh, which puts the board in the, the untenable position of having to judge as to whether or not we should go back out to bid. And in, in our past history, and not on this board, but in, in the prior boards, in some cases we'd been out four and five times on a particular project. And by the time we had been out, because the board would not waive it, uh, we ended up with no bidders. So in some cases we just couldn't do the project at all because we couldn't get a bidder at all. Um, the requirements are a little stiff, uh, and I, I think that uh, you need to either change the dollar amounts so they're more representative to give people an emphasis to bid on the, on the projects instead of a $15,000 project, which is very modest today. Um, if you increase that to twenty or twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, and um, perhaps raise the threshold for bidding uh, on large projects to fifty thousand dollars on public works projects, by statute it's thirty-five thousand dollars. So maybe we should go there. Uh, rewriting the whole thing to make this very convoluted uh, is probably not the best policy. We tried to go through this and do it. It's very confusing. Uh, it doesn't lend us well to uh, making the policy work easily, uh, and yet it means that we have to streamline too many things off. And, and uh, personally, I like the involvement of the board to some degree um, because I think certain things need to be reviewed, uh, although I do statutorily have the power to award contracts, and I'm the only one who can sign them. But I think this has got to be a shared area of concern between the board and the manager and I need to keep you informed as to what's going on. I tried to, to, to word it that way. But I don't think successfully, by changing everything in that policy, it's going to do us a lot of good either with the vendors or in a public relations standpoint. So that's kind of what I had to say. Oh, yep. Mr. What about the, um, the, when we already have like like what was happening at the police station with we already were using one type of equipment when you have a single source of equipment there is a provision of the current policy that says that that has to come to the board for the board's notice and i think that's probably a good thing to do just so everybody knows what's going on uh we in the past have asked you to vote approval for that and i think that's another good policy uh, it's just like when we use state and federal bids. Um, we started out by just simply looking them up and then letting you know they were there and, and you would approve them uh, to the point now where we actually attach them to the purchase order. So the information is there for you as well as for the auditors. So I, I think it's kind of a double check on everything. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's really unraveling the system so people can look at it, can take a look at what's going on, and we bring it to the meeting and we show it and we explain it. Uh, I think those are both very good things. But single purchases, in a lot of cases, are things we run into because we already have a piece of equipment that can only be supplemented or repaired by that particular vendor. So what is your gut recommendation? I would suggest um, that we raise the threshold for bidding from 15000 to $20,000 or $25,000, whatever, whatever suits the board. Uh, that we leave the number of bids at three, uh, and we attempt to get those. Um, and I'm going to try to streamline that process a little bit uh, by setting up a, uh, uh, a an online or an on-computer system that will allow us to keep a strong list of individual bidders who we could go to. The other thing I might suggest to the board and I've suggested this a couple of times and talked to the managers about this, that we try to put together a consortium for bidding, which may get us bigger discounts by using the Seacoast cities and towns uh, in bidding as a group in a lot of the areas that we look for. I mean, with state bids, there are a lot of things we can buy without having to go to bid, and the same with federal. But there are a lot of things that we purchase during the course of the year that other cities and towns purchase as well. And if we could get a consolidated bidding effort going on, then we could probably get that at lower costs, and so could they. So I would suggest that we go in that direction as well. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Yeah, uh, this uh, 
This authority for the town manager comes under RSA 37 colon 6. Specifically what we addressed tonight and it's referenced in the memo is uh, section Romans 7, uh, 17. Uh, and the town manager will have charge, control, and supervision subject to the direction of the selectmen and to the bylaws of the town, if any, on the following matters. And J specifically calls for the letting, making, and performance of all contracts for work done for the town. Uh, I received four emails on this purchasing policy. It's come up perhaps uh, in Selectman Griffin's decade of uh, tenure. Certainly has come up in all of mine. Uh, I never, uh, under a prior chairman, uh, had difficulty in perusing and examining in the public's interest uh, any bid at any amount uh, in doing the people's work in maintaining the bidding integrity, in maintaining competitiveness in, in taxpayer and citizen interest. I think it's a good business practice. I conduct that in my daily operations. I would expect that we would do the same. I have examined the document that has been uh, provided tonight. Uh, I don't support it. Uh, it separates what I have just outlined is our specific statutory authority. Uh, it calls for uh, acting town managers, subordinate department heads to uh, sign off on contracts. The simple procedure that's in effect, uh, and I don't think that we've ever changed it, is when we have bid uh, awards for recommendation to the board that there's an assertion that it complies with the bidding or the purchasing policy and that is in all cases and when there are exceptions that exception is noted and the exact reasons are stated I see no problem with it I find uh, us removing our authority up to fifty thousand uh, dollars problematic I don't support it uh, and I'm interested as a selectman no matter where the board moves mr. chairman uh, in examining all of the, <coughs> the rewarded and I think it maintains the integrity of the process and instills confidence in the voters thank you how many changes are in this purchase order that's in front of us? Well, there's a lot, and 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 there are just thrown out as examples. Of, this is a draft it's of a what draft. you could do. Um, and it's not the intention to have you sign this off tonight, uh, but to look at various options that you could have. Uh, it goes a long ways in changing the current process, but the current process isn't really broken. It's just. A little erratic because of where, where we're bidding. Right. Um, Fifteen thousand dollars is is really a small amount of money when we're getting out to the, the process that we're going to bids for, um, and, and that's why we suggested it be twenty thousand. But um, I I don't see any reason to go with less than three bidders. We should try to get more than that if we can, uh, simply because we're looking at how we expend the taxpayers' money, and we want to get the best job for what we're, we're bidding out on. Okay. I agree, and I, I agree with Selectman Bean, but I also agree that, you know, if, if, if we're at a figure that's unrealistic for people to do a, a bid on, you know, if it needs to go up a little bit, it needs to go up a little bit just because of that. You know, I think it, it addresses the point that was made at the public comment of why we don't get enough bids. I think revising the way we put our bids out, not, not the way we approve them, the way we put it out, streamlining that, getting that more efficient, as you said, so that we're able to get more bidders and they're able to bid uh, effectively, but e not easier, but, but you know, more efficiently. Right. You know, because I think a lot of people, when they're going to bid, if it's not an efficient process, then if, if it's they too labor consumption for them, then they don't want to do it. Right. So I agree. And I agree that the board should have the, uh, the approval, and I also agree that it should be presented in a very transparent option oh, yeah. as it is now manner so that the public sees what we're talking about and sees what we're proving. So I, I think as a draft, I think it's a draft we can look at and I think we can talk about changing the procedure, not the uh, not necessarily exactly what we do, but how we can get it more efficient, more streamlined. Regina? I think that um, definitely we shouldn't I think we should definitely at least still try to get three bids on anything because, I mean, as a former auditor, things are constantly changing year to year. People do things different. Things either get, you know, cost more, cost less. 
and you need to keep going out in the market and looking. Maybe like what Fred said, establish like a set group of you know people that we are used to working for. You know, maybe have that more organized as where to, how we can find it. Like Jim says, you know, making the process easier. I think going from fifteen thousand to fifty is pretty extreme. I think that having a second check on things is always good. I mean, it's not really, you know, I did look up at, I did go on the NHMA website, and I did look at other cities and towns, other municipalities, and they did mostly, it was 20, 25,000. But like I said, I mean, if we're still, if we're gonna continually having the problems getting less than three, then it's gonna come to us anyway. But I think that maybe if we make more of an effort to try to make it easier for ourselves and for bidders. We don't really have to change too much in the policy. And I mean, I don't see, I've reviewed many policies and I don't see anything that the board did in December that, you know, deterred from the policy. They had the right to do it. You know, the board had the right to do what they did. They established the policy and they can waive it. So, you know, I think that uh, we just need to maybe work on the methods. I think the amount from going from 15 to 20 is not a bad idea. I think I agree, also agree that we need to make sure when when we say we, we went out to bid and we didn't get three bidders, how did we go out to bid? Did we did we email 10 people and none of it came back? Did we put it in three publications and nobody answered it? Um, th th there's some ways that you know we can probably try to work at better equipped in the bids. But as far as going to from the 15 to 20, I don't think that's a problem. So. Um, I don't mind that either. So. One of the things we will do is we will consolidate the bidding. <clears throat> right now, departments are in charge of their bidding. I think we'll change some of that so that it's supervised before it goes out the door. So they'll prepare the bid, they'll send it up, uh, they'll send it up with a list of bidders, and we'll make sure the envelopes are prepared and it gets out in the mail. But let's take a look at what we're doing and why we're doing it, as opposed to having the approval of the contracts done here with town council and then sent to the departments and they issue them out. I want to make sure our timing sequences are correct. I want to make sure that a lot of, it's going to put a lot more work on my office, but that's okay. It means that we may also save some extra money. Well, and, and we also realize that with the the uh, by getting five additional bids on the, on the fire department's phone system, we were able to save ten thousand dollars. Right, it's so a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So, we, what would you like to do with it for now? I think we should just leave it as it is and have Fred. I would. My personal opinion is not approve this, not vote on this. Right. Have Fred work on consolidating the process. Come up with how we're going to do it. How it's going to work more efficiently. Bring it back to us. Yeah, and then we can do it. Good. So that we're making no changes. You know, as Selectman Bean said, we keep an eye on being more progressive. Okay. And if you think that going up to twenty thousand would be better, then come back and let us know. I will ask the departments, and we'll do some queuing out to people we normally do business with, and see what their recommendation is. And we'll bring back something information for you. Okay. Next thing we have on a new business is listing, listing and marketing agreement for the disposal of the 1988 E1 pumper. Probably a brand new truck, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I remember when it was delivered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, the department brought over a, a, a request uh, to consider this um, listing and marketing commission agreement from uh, Brindley Mountain Fire Apparatus in Union Grove, Alabama. Apparently they do a lot of this work. Um, I'm not particularly enamored with this. Uh, first of all, it's under the, uh, the laws of the state of Alabama, which means we really don't have any, any good recourse for whatever happens if we have a disagreement with them. Secondly, um, we have to pay 10% of the purchase price, up to $100,000. So that's a substantial amount of money. My suggestion, and we've done this before, is that we advertise it locally, and when we put it in the local paper, they put it on the web, which means it gets national attention. And we ask for proposals to purchase. 
and let's see what we get. This is not a new piece of equipment. It needs some work. Um, although we've been using it as, as uh, one of our active pieces, it's no longer in that department, and everything that we have on it has been stripped off it, so it's pretty bare. Uh, but it could be put back in a number one condition for a modest amount of money compared to what it would be brand new. But uh, we should get some money for it without having to pay commissions. And if we can do that internally, my suggestion is we think we, we should try it. What type of money is it going to get? That's <coughs> just shooting yourself in the foot to even think about it. I mean... You could have someone who desperately wants a 1980-81, and they're willing to pay you a lot of money, but uh, there again, um, they'll have to let them out of the funny farm to pay it, because this is probably a few thousand dollars at most. At most. At most. Sounds like a party bus, Bill. I think, I don't think we need to sign into an agreement with a company like that. I think... Yeah. Uh, I think if we advertise it ourselves, um, as the internet gets better and better, there are much better ways to advertise that. And I think I agree. with a little ingenuity, um, we can do all that ourselves. And the ten percent we save may not, <laughs> we'll save that just by doing it ourselves. And the taxpayers can use the ten percent. Absolutely. Do we? Uh Sir, have any liability when we sell it? I mean, or can we get as it? Is, as show, I'm sure our, our legal department can can write up a contract that says okay. as is as shown. Yeah. Right. No warranties intended nor implied. We do that on all the equipment we okay. sell. So, yeah, I think we should do it ourselves. I do too. Okay. Next thing we have is closing comments. Well, what about other old business? All right. New business. Other new business. <laughs> what do you have? Well, th not that it's. I don't have a whole lot to say about it, but I've been doing some research, and I noticed that quite a few, not particular, what I'm not talking about the sidewalks at the beach, but sidewalks in general, that all the different communities around here are have sidewalk issues. And um, for instance, Exeter is doing all new sidewalks mm -hmm. and in the downtown area, and I guess they've had quite a bit of comment about the um, putting the utilities underground and they've decided against it um, for some I'm not exactly sure why if the people voted against it or what um, but it was far too expensive to do that and then from what I understand Stratum has gotten a $600,000 grant um, to do sidewalks that don't even go anywhere um, and they're calling them a sidewalks to nowhere. <laughs> and right, and it's right on, I guess, 33 there, Portsmouth Avenue, but to the old town hall in Stratum or something like that. I haven't had time to go over there. But I do know that in the past, I've gone and looked in Salisbury, in the downtown area. They have the most beautiful sidewalks mm -hmm. there. Yeah. They're so nice. And not only do they in, are they in that downtown area where they put that... Yep town hall or library and all the other stuff that's there. They go into the neighborhoods and they're granite, concrete, and they're beautiful. Yep, they are. And again, they came from grants. So I'm just wondering if there's some way that we could investigate ways of getting more grants. We can take a look. They're very hard to get because of the category that these grant granting agencies place us in as being extremely wealthy if we're a community which isn't true mm -hmm. um, yes these sidewalks should be redone yes they should be in concrete yes they should have granite facing to protect them they should be treated uh, and yes we should uh, do as many sidewalks as we possibly can at one time so that we can get this over with we have a lot of sidewalks mm -hmm. and uh, they're in not so good repair so that's one of the reasons I know Public Works has requested that we spend a total of about $50,000 a year, each year, uh, 25 from the budget and 25 from a warrant article, to try to start getting a handle on some of the sidewalks we have. Some of them are very poor condition. Yeah. The ones at the beach are ultimately going to be destroyed because they were never treated, and the, the cement will ultimately fail. 
Um, but that's a number of years in the future. So hopefully we can, by the time we get the rest of the sidewalks done, those will fall in place so we can get them repaired as they start to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like for instance, again, Stratum is one of the wealthier towns in the yes. area. And for them to get $600,000 for a sidewalk to nowhere, I'd like to know how they did it. Well, I'd like to have a few sidewalks to nowhere. <laughs> and we'll find out where they got the grant from. Mm -hmm. And today I was at Gloss, not Gloucester, Rockport. And they have beautiful sidewalks yeah. that look like they've been there forever. They have uh, certain areas that maybe it looks like they drive over them. They you know, have to have an entryway up somewhere. They're all broken. Um, they still work. Oh, yeah. And they're cracked, but they still look wonderful. They're all concrete with granite. And it would be nice if we had more of... Maybe not broken ones, but... Well, we don't want the broken ones, but we'll take the new ones and the ones that are in good condition. And some that will last. And, and I wish I had the uh, the revenue share that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts gives their cities and towns to do that work. Well, when I saw the ones in Salisbury, that's what I figured. Yeah, they have a very high percentage of, of funds that come from the Commonwealth uh, through the what they call the, uh, the pink sheet. I think it's still called the pink sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the cherry sheet, excuse me. Um, uh, where they get a lot of aid, and they've just increased that again. So um, that's something we don't have in New Hampshire. We have just the highway block grant, which is very modest. Mm -hmm. And in, in Exeter, the people, the voters were very supportive. We should be here, too, to get them done properly. Yeah, because they are, you can see out front that we have excavated part of the sidewalk out there because it's so old it became a trip hazard. So we've taken it out. We're going to redo that little section that's out there that was a trip hazard. And we had a young lady uh, almost fall out there the other day, and I immediately called Public Works, and they came up and took the sidewalk out, and they're going to have that re-cemented so that it's in good condition. We have a lot like that, and we need to work on them uh, diligently to get them put back in proper condition so people can feel safe and we can maintain them with ease and not a lot of expense. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything else in a new business? I have nothing. Thank you. Nothing. Okay. Closing comments? No. Motion to adjourn. Uh, 1957. But before you we adjourn. have a motion. Before you, you wouldn't want to adjourn. I understand the board would like to go into a non-public session. You would right. do that before you adjourn. Right. We need a motion to go into non-public. I make a motion to go into non-public session. Under 91. I'll second A, it. semicolon three, two, small a, and small c. I need a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Wall.